Hello, and welcome back to Kiro's Workshop. It's a brand new day and a brand new idea for Bot Make It Fashion. Remember that for this section, you decide what I make. For today's project, I ask for ideas on my Instagram account. That's right, don't forget to follow me on Instagram so you can participate on these polls. I received a lot of ideas, but the top two were Helga Pataki and Bugs Bunny in disguise. So, Bugs Bunny, we all know him, we all love him. But now, as an adult, and after watching like all the seasons of the RuPaul's Drag Race, I came to the conclusion that Bugs Bunny always wore disguises, but when he dresses up as a woman, he's basically in drag. Who knew my very first contact with drag was by watching my favorite rabbit when I was 5 years old. Of course, I loved the idea, and I chose this look. This is very fashion already, but I know there's a way to pump it up a little bit more. I don't want to make it accurate, you know, with the big feet and the tail, but I do want to keep her with the same skin tone. Well, enough talking. Let's make this fashion. So the obviously choice for this was a Monster High Melody doll. I begin by drawing the eyes off camera as usual. And now to give it a draggier appearance, I'll draw the lids past the original molding. So with a purple pencil, I'm drawing the new lids. I want my box to be very sassy. And now I'll fill them with purple pastel. Of course this will take a few layers, to make them really opaque. Now some highlight with white under the eyes. I know this looks very harsh, but the sealant tones it down a little bit. With a small brush, I'm applying grey pastel to contour the nose. And blend it with a larger one. This is a new technique, so that the contouring of the nose isn't very harsh. I'll highlight the bridge of the nose the same way with white pastel. And with big pastel, I'll dust her nose. Bugs Bunny's nose is extremely tiny. Continue to contour the face with red pastel on the cheeks and jawline. And off camera I'll draw the lips with red. Bugs' eyes are two black dots, but for this drag formation I'll draw them blue, just like Lola Bunny. I'll begin by tracing the outline of the iris. And then fill them with a lighter blue. Next step, draw the waterline with a terracotta color. And some red blush on the cheeks, that you can barely see. And for the eyebrows, I want to make a very different style. So I'm giving her a 1930s inspired brow. You know, very thin and arched. Then I'll add the pupils. Now I'm adding some black pastel on the edge of the lids. Off camera, I'll paint the scleras and highlight the eyes. Next step, highlight the brow bone. This always makes the brows pop beautifully. I'm really loving this technique of applying the pigment with a brush and blend it later. Everything looks softer. Now I'm layering the nose contour. It has to be very defined, so that the nose looks really tiny. And to complete the makeup, add some purple shadow on the bottom lid. Next step, shadow on the eyes with grey pastel on the scleras and black on the iris. Paint teeny tiny catch lights and to drag it up more, add some glue to the lids and let the purple glitter rain.
Let's seal the deal with false lashes. Okay, so after finally getting rid of the cat ears, I proceed to paint the complete sculpt yellow. My meal body doll came up with very aggressive hands, so I took the ones of my clothing mannequin and I'll paint them white. You know, Bugs always wears white gloves. Time for the clothes. I begin with a basic top pattern. Cut it on pink fabric and I'll sew everything by hand. The top is ready. And I decided to cut the sleeves on pink tulle with a short sleeve pattern. I had the intention to make puffy sleeves, but the difference of the texture and color, meh, I don't think they look elegant at all. So I took my basic sleeve pattern to create a new silhouette. I still want to accentuate the shoulders, but with an edgier take. Why do I keep this footage? To show you the process, of course. And these are my new sleeves. And then I proceed to sew them on the top. For the skirt, I'm keeping it simple. I'm making a pencil skirt with this blue navy fabric. And this is the outfit. But the sleeves, mm, they were not cooperating at all. For some reason they were like pulled back by the top. This was because it didn't have an actual armhole. So the sleeves will have to be two separated pieces. Because I will not risk my vision over this. No ma'am. Now let's make a bow. I need a fork and some ribbon. I place one end across the fork, take the other end and pass it through the middle and under the rest of the ribbon, pull it and surround everything from the top. Make a knot. Secure that knot. And there you go, a perfect little bow. I'll glue this in front of the skirt. For the shoes, I took these Gulli Jobs Skull Shorts High Sandals. These shoes were perfect for this project. They just need a tiny black bow. I always wanted to use these shoes for real. With a thinner ribbon, I'll make the choker. And secure it with a drop of super glue. Later, glue on another tiny black bow. Let's put on the sleeves. And voila! Now time for the hair. As I told you in the last video, hot glue and vinyl are two things that definitely don't mix well together. So for this project, I decided to make an experiment. After painting the scalp with acrylic paint, I gave the head two coats of regular glue, Elmer's glue, hoping this could serve as a barrier between the glue and the vinyl. I used glue because it kinda covers the plugs that are left after removing the hair, and kind of secures it once it's dry. So now I'm hot gluing all my yarn webs. I know that lots of people prefer yarn over synthetic hair, and to be honest, <laughs> I hate both. Rerouting can be very tedious, and prepping the yarn to make webs is very time consuming too. Lesson of the day? Hair is overrated. I gotta admit though, this hair color, ooh la la, stunning. Once done, I'll style the hair off camera, with patience and lots of hairspray. To finish everything, I made a barrette with soft clay. Paint it black. Paint it blue. 
and paint it blue. Then dip it in a bath of blue glitter. I'm sewing together two pieces of ribbon to create this very stylish thing. Add a drop of Yoohoo and glue on the ribbon. Now our beret evolved into a very elegant fascinator. To finish it, I took a purple crystal and pin it down. This will also help me to secure the fascinator on the doll. Thanks a lot to Oscar Asterion from Instagram for the idea. This was such a cool project, and I really love how my drag box came out. And this time it's your turn. Write in the comments the character you would like to see on the next What Make It Fashion episode. I'll post my top two favorite ideas on a poll on Instagram, so make sure to follow me if you want to vote. At Kiros underscore workshop. This doll is already available for adoption with some of my other work at my Etsy store. The link is in the description box. And well, that's up for today. But as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next time. Kira out.